Hi, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and you're watching Get Your Sax Together, the home of free online saxophone lessons. This week, I've got something super cool for you beboppers out there, and that is my mothership bebop enclosures exercise. Let's do it. I remember when I was trying to learn how to play changes, how to play bebop, jazz, basically. And I'd learned the chord tones and I'd learned all this stuff and I knew the right scales. And I was trying to put together like language that sounded like the record. And whatever I played, it never really sounded like the record. And then when I started transcribing records, I really started to understand what enclosures were and why it's so important to know your enclosures if you want to sound authentic when you play bebop. So in my improvisation mastery course, I designed the mothership of all enclosures exercises, which I'm going to teach you today. It's going to give you a bunch of absolutely fantastic, usable bebop language, and it's going to be tremendous for your technique. But just before we get into that, um, check out the Inner Circle membership, which is my private membership, where there's a whole load of extra content that you get on top of your regular YouTube content. For example, in the Inner Circle, you're going to get a backing track to play this exercise. And also, I'm going to explain all the different fingerings that I use in this exercise. However, there's a lot more to the Inner Circle than that. We've got some amazing special guests. There's a monthly inspirational solo that I break down and um, give you loads of actionable content. And you'll get lots of backstage footage following me around as a pro saxophonist and harnessing my wisdom and experience to help your own playing. So go and check out the Inner Circle. However, there's also a lovely free resource for you, which is my Saxophone Success Masterclass. You can see the link for that right Right there. That is absolutely awesome. It's an hour of really solid teaching that can transform your playing. Okay, parish announcements over. Let's check out what this um, mothership enclosures exercise is all about. So real quick, what are enclosures? Quite simple. It does what it says on the tin. You choose a strong chord tone and you enclose it with notes above, below, and those notes could be diatonic and they could be chromatic. So two different types, there's chromatic enclosures and diatonic enclosures. You can play the note above, the note below, and then hit the note. You can play two notes below, two notes above, then hit the note. The variations are endless. However, having looked at all these endless variations and transcribed a bunch of great players like Sonny Rollins, Sonny Stitt, blah, 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 blah. You start to realize that actually not all the combinations are used. So I have devised <coughs> this uh, Mothership Enclosures exercise, which only uses solid enclosures that I have personally seen used all the time in actual bebop where the rubber hits the road. So there's no wasted enclosures that you're never actually gonna need. Plus, it's amazing for your technique. So let's take a look at the exercise I've devised and I'll explain it and then you'll hear it played. And of course, you can get a free PDF to go with this lesson. Just click the link that you can see in the description. The URL is also below. That has got this exercise written out in 12 keys. It's absolutely amazing resource. It'll keep you busy with your technique and get your load of hardcore bebop language under your fingers. It's absolutely awesome, that free resource. So go and get your free PDF. In the meantime, let's get the exercise up in the screen and I'll break it down and tell you what's going on with it. So, here we go. Let's start off by looking at this exercise in C. The exercise itself is how many bars? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. It's a 16 bar pattern. And then it repeats through every key going up uh, in chromatic steps. So it's always the same in every bar. You have a four note enclosure and then you have a four note diatonic pattern taken from within the major scale, when, uh, the major scale of the key you're in. So looking at the first bar, for example, the chord tone is marked in red on the music. So that is the target note that you're aiming for. Now this is really important because when you're playing enclosures, you have to enclose an important chord tone. And I should give you a full disclosure, uh, a full disclaimer. If you don't know which chord tones you're aiming for and how they voice lead, and my good friend Dave Pollock will teach you all about that stuff, as well as uh, being able to learn it inside Improvisation Mastery, of course. If you don't know what chord tones you're aiming for, all of this, you know, isn't gonna sound good. Let's just put it that way. So 
This is an exercise that uh, is built on the foundation of solid voice leading and knowing which chord tones are important. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. Now, that said, the red note is the major scale. So if you look at the first bar, you've got a C. If you look in the second bar, you've got a D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it just goes da 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 the, the target notes just go up the scale. So within each bar, you've got four, uh, four note enclosure, which targets the scale note, and then you've got a four note diatonic segment, a four note diatonic cell. Now, these diatonic cells and these chromatic enclosures are taken directly from bebop classic language. So every single bar that you learn on this exercise will give you solid, authentic bebop language. And that's what usually happens. You normally get an enclosure and then some kind of four note diatonic grouping. Very, very common in bebop. So this is a really, really high value exercise. So looking at the first bar then, we've got the two chromatic notes below, the two chromatic notes above converging on the C, enclosing the C. <laughs> the next bar, um, there's a different type of enclosure, da, 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 targeting the D. Then in the third bar, we've got, you go up a step, back down and then up chromatically to the E and so on. There's a different enclosure for each bar and there's also a different diatonic little pattern going on there. Quite often it's one, two, three, five is the, the structure of the diatonic portion, but not always so. <laughs> um, then once you finish the first eight bars, we start going down and we've got different enclosures and we've got different diatonic scale steps. So, for example, if you look at the third line, the diatonic portion of the uh, of the first bar of the third line, it goes down a third and then scale steps, C, A, G, F. But then in the next bar, it goes B, A, G, and E. So the, the leap down a third comes later in the four note pattern. So it's not a symmetrical pattern, okay? This is not a symmetrical pattern. It's a pragmatic pattern that I have meticulously worked out based on transcribing a bunch of bebop. So there's no dead wood in this exercise. So that's how the pattern works. And then once you've finished it, you go up a semitone and do it all again. Now, just before you hear this exercise played, I'll give you a quick public health warning. This exercise is a real bear, especially once you start doing it through all 12 keys. I mean, it's not called the mothership for nothing. However, once you've got this down, and it's tremendous for your technique, by the way, and it's tremendous for your phrasing. Um, once you've got this down, you will be armed with a veritable arsenal of bebop language. This is a super high value exercise. So start slowly, put your bench gnome on, start with the first key, start with the first bar, and just meticulously and slowly, methodically work it out. Now, once you're weeks, months, even years into the process, you start to kind of hear it. So when you go to the next key, you sort of know what to expect. That's the beauty of this whole thing. And then when you start transcribing bebop, you hear these enclosures and you're like, oh, I know that one. But all that said, let's be absolutely honest. This is a difficult exercise, pretty advanced, and it's really gonna tax your technique. So all that said, I'm gonna now demonstrate this exercise. I won't do all 12 keys, we'll be here all day. So I'll just do the first two keys, which is C and D flat, and that'll give you the idea, and then it just flows on from there. Don't forget to get your free PDF using the URL that you can see there, print it all out, start working on it methodically, and your bebop chops will thank you. So here's what it sounds like, good luck. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
that's all we've got time for this week. Don't forget to get your free PDF for this mothership, <laughs> the mothership enclosures workout. You will really improve your bebop. You'll really improve your technique. Even if you never want to play bebop, this is a great technical etude. So go and get your PDF. Now, as I mentioned before, there's loads more bonus content inside the inner circle along with um, amazing uh, live Q&A coaching sessions with me, special guests, and a bunch more really cool stuff. So go and check out the inner circle. And for all you coffee, caffeine junkies who've been buying me coffee, Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Every drop of Java is much appreciated and you're all super kind. So until next week, <laughs> make sure that you practice hard, practice smart, and the mothership enclosures exercise is a really smart way of practicing. And of course, as always, enjoy your music. Take it easy. Hi, I'm Fred Saxophonist. Uh, let's check the levels on that mic. Take two.